Uh, next match is Two Cold Scorpio, who comes to the ring holding a WCW World Title belt for some reason. I mean, obviously you wouldn't have referred to it because you would have been like, "Well, why is he holding the belt?" Uh, defeats Julio Fantasco in a match full of uh, fairly blown spots, um, including I do want to make mention of this. Uh, Scorpio's finish was the tumbleweed off the top, which is essentially like a tumbling leg drop off the top kind of thing, and he really obviously misses it. So, what's the best thing you do? Show a replay of it from a different angle of him missing it. <laughs> like, he's like two feet away. But, but, See, uh, you could, t- in this pay-per-view, you can tell that the crew, the camera crew, that they're not educated in how to shoot wrestling. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to shoot it. Nobody told them. Nobody told me what to say. Or I don't even know who wrote this pay-per-view. I had no, this was the pay-per-view nobody wants to take ownership of. Nobody said, oh, I wrote the Heroes of Wrestling page. You don't ever hear that. You don't hear anybody, oh, uh, a wrestler saying, I appeared on the Heroes of Wrestling pay-per-view. You don't hear that either. You don't hear me going around, oh, I did <laughs> I did commentary on the Heroes of Wrestling pay-per-view. The worst pay-per-view ever done. I, I, I really believe that. And if you... Can you can you get it online? Can you just watch it on YouTube? Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, the copyright holder has made it free for all, so anyone can upload uh, Heroes of Wrestling or, or or upload matches. And uh, just just some picking up on something you said before. <clears throat> now, if you thought Randy Rosenblum was bad, what about uh, the person who joins commentary with you for this match, Captain Lou Albano, who is I don't know what. I don't know if he won a raffle because, like, he ended up being the commissioner for the evening. I think he was just told at ringside and he flips out over it. But, I mean, working with Captain Lou Albano and just, like, the effluvia of words, the rapid-fire machine-gun pace of, oh, my God, and he kept calling it Julio for Julio that I wrote down here as well. Captain Lou Albano memories, for God's sake. He's Wait a minute. Interesting. Before, before we leave this, oh, yeah. what did you call his flow of words? The effluvia? The effluvia, the, the sort of spillage of words flying out of his mouth, almost I like have never, unchecked. I have, never, I have never heard that word before. Effluvia. I'm going to look it up. Not now, but I, I will later. <clears throat> oh, okay. I, I'm I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, through my headphones, <laughs> oh, Lou, Lou Albano is coming out, and he's going he's gonna to sit with you guys. I'm going, Okay. Me, I'm thinking they told him what they wanted him to say. They didn't tell him nothing. They said, just go out there and start talking. And he did. And I don't know when he breathed, to tell you the truth. And But he was sitting, I think, between us, I think, much as I remember. Mm-hmm. And I, so I just, I, I just let him do his thing. I mean, it's not up to me to direct traffic. I was trying to direct, I was trying to drive myself. I can't tell him how to drive. And then Randy too. So we, we were all flying blind. If we was in a plane, we'd be going in all kinds of different directions, probably crashing it, but we didn't crash it yet. So it's still flying. With Captain Lou, did you meet him in the WWF? Was he still there at the time? Oh, I met him before, but I met him in my first run. Yeah. Probably. Ten years earlier, probably, I met him. But he wasn't working there. He just came through one night. So, which led me to think, when those guys finished up with Vince, and he was with Vince Sr., I wonder, did Vince Jr. kind of help them out a little bit or not? Did he give them anything? Well... Uh, I can tell you this, there were certain people that I think Vince Sr., before he died, told Vince Jr., look after certain people, like, you know, Gorilla Monsoon and Captain Lou, because he kept Captain Lou around for a while. Uh, Maybe Freddie Blassie, some guys like that, you know, just keep these guys around, give them a payday. And I think Mm -hmm. Captain Lou was one of those. And also Captain Lou would come through very occasionally in the WWF in the 90s. I think he did, you know, uh, colour commentary one evening on Raw, and that didn't happen again. Um, <laughs> and then I think, he, do you know what? He also briefly managed, uh, uh, what were they called? The head shrinkers in the WWF at mm-hmm. the time as well. I think when they were good guys, possibly. 
But uh, any particular stories about Lou? I don't know if you ever met him after that, you know, at conventions or anything. I've never been with him at a convention. He's gone, right? Has he passed away? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that was it tells you how close I was to him. But he he treated me fine. He knew who I was. <laughs> and for him to know who I was, actually said that he kind of follows the business. Now, a lot of guys, when they finished up there, they didn't look back. They just said, well, that's a point of my life. I'm going, I'm, I'm doing something else. And they're done with it. But Captain Lou knew who I was. And at that time, you didn't have YouTube. You didn't have social media. So he had to hear it through the guys or the people that he, he had talked to who I was, which I, I appreciated that. And, uh, I wish I had. I never had my picture made with him. This was a. This was. I would have a million pictures, except we didn't have the cameras on phones, camera phones, because you'd have to find a cameraman to take a picture, send you the picture, and I wish I'd had a. I had a picture with him, but I don't. 